Hi friends, welcome back to Solar Session. This week I'm here with one of our solar experts to talk about the new NEM3 decision and how it's going to affect us. So let's get right into it. Two, one, and lift off. So hey Ashton, if you wouldn't mind, would you introduce yourself to our, our audience and tell them what you do around here? Yeah, hi you guys. I'm Ashton Stone. I'm the sales manager for Option One Solar. And I also uh, am on the front line. I also sell as well. So very in tune with what's going on and how it's going to potentially affect uh, the industry. You've been here for quite a while, right? I mean, you're one of the most knowledgeable guys here. So how long uh, have you been doing this? Going on five years. Wow, that's, that's quite a long time. Yeah. So um, for people that don't know what NEM is, can we just discuss that really quickly? Net metering, it's basically what, what the utility companies are going to compensate you when you send a kilowatt hour back to the grid. In a nutshell, uh, how the meter is read is uh, it's either you used more kilowatt hours uh, on the day than your system produced or vice versa. And if you have a positive surplus, you end up getting credit for every kilowatt hour you send back to the grid. And that is your net right. of the meter, net metering. So like net, like on a paycheck, like, like this is a, your net. Like a fishing net. Yeah. So how many kilowatt hours you are going to get uh, compensated for. Okay. I, I hear the word time of use or TOU used a lot with NEM. Can yeah. you explain a little bit what that is? It's more for solar. When you go solar, you go on a rate plan that's called time of use. And uh, the different um, values uh, are according to what times um, Edison and all the other utility companies uh, put forth to be charged. Let's say, for example, in the morning up until 4 o'clock, that's off-peak, and there's, let's say, 33 cents, whether you send a kilowatt hour back to the grid or you use one uh, additionally, um, pulling from your credits, what we call. Yeah. It's uh, 33 cents going rate for that time of day. In the same respect, at 4 o'clock, it starts peak time. 4 to 9 is peak time, and uh, let's call it 54 cents. It changes. It, it's, it's, it's so they charge you more based on the demand of power. Yeah, the times of the day uh, that, that put the most stress on the grid is 4 to 9, and so there's a premium on that power. Whether you're pulling from your credits at a higher rate uh, or sending kilowatt hours back to the grid at a higher rate. Okay, so it works both ways. Yeah. Okay. So electrical utilities are heavily involved with solar at this point. I mean, the time of use thing is based off electrical utilities. How, how exactly do they work with you if somebody buys solar? Are you still with the electrical company? How does that work? Oh, you, yeah, you're always grid tied. It's actually illegal to cut the cord, so to speak. And so there's, uh, yeah, it's the way it works. You have to be connected to the grid in yeah. order to have net metering. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you, recently they've been trying to change NEM as it, as it is. Can we talk about the history of how that fight's been going? Yeah. So let's start off with NEM 1. Yeah. NEM 1 uh, was kilowatt hour for kilowatt hour. There was no perversion on different rates, different times, nothing like that. You send a kilowatt hour to the grid that you haven't used, you have that kilowatt hour to use later. So one to one. One to one ratio. Okay. And then along uh, around 2016 came NEM 2. And NEM 2 uh, was dictating different values for different times of day. And here's where the, the perversion came. The sun goes down at 4 o'clock, mm -hmm. 5 o'clock, or 6 o'clock, depending on the... How are you? In summer, 7, you know, yeah. call, it, call it that. Um, you're pulling against your credits at a higher ratio because the sun is not up at 8, 9 o'clock. And the argument is that that's the time that the grid is the most stressed. And it's because solar is not backfeeding because the sun's down, and I get it. And... On average, NEM 2 was 35%, on average, more expensive uh, to cut out your whole bill, meaning you needed 35% more panel to achieve the same result as you did on NEM 1. I see. So how does that affect NEM 3? NEM 3 is a whole different monster. You went from, you're getting 33 cents on average for kilowatt hour you send to the grid to an average of 5 to 6. So what that means is in theory, theoretically, in order to cut out your whole bill now with NEM3, you're going to need four times as many panels. But Edison is putting a hard cap on 150% um, of, your usage? of your usage when you build the, the system. 
So they're making it so that you cannot, even if you wanted to do four times as many panels, cut out your whole bill. They're making it illegal. Well, they're making it so that they get their money. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we've been fighting this off for the whole past year, right? I mean, they, they tried to pass this around this time last year, didn't they? Only it was a worse deal back then. Yeah, Calsa did a good job in putting up a, a, a solid wall of defense and bought us an extra year. But ultimately, um, we lost. All right, so now that the NEM3 decision has been made, which just happened a few days ago, it happened in the beginning of December, in the middle of December, and it seems like in the middle of the holiday season, like they tried to sneak it through while everybody's like worried about their holiday season or whatever. Yeah. But anyways, it just happened. So what does that mean for all of us in California exactly? Well, we're already in an energy crisis. Yeah. And it's exacerbated by greed. Yeah. And so the utility companies know this. The, the prices are skyrocketing. Typically, yeah. the, the, I mean, the last couple of years, the rates have gone up on average like 8% a year. Oh, really? And so that's, that's in an area Almost 10% like, a year? That's a lot. Oh, man. That's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But what can we do? We don't have any other choice. Yeah. You can't go from Verizon to T-Mobile. That's, yeah. The, the, the only thing you could do is go solar right now. Yeah. That's, I mean, or don't use anything. But when it's 20 degrees outside or 120, uh, you got... Uh, some elderly, you know, some some children, some people need to live. AC, right. heat. I mean, look what's going on in other countries. There's, an, there's a serious energy crisis. Yeah. People are going on YouTube to figure out how to custom rig a magnet to create heat. And, I mean, it's it's pretty apparent that it's... Uh, it's, it's well known yeah. by the utilities. It's a crisis across the world. They're taking advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, for you know, we're, it's California, but on top of that, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's all politics. Uh, so, I mean, how could this have happened? How could they have passed such a deal that was, I mean, obviously it's not in the best interest for most of the people in California. How could they have passed it through like this? Well, the way that it was written was that it, it, it basically, the utility companies needed to raise the rates. But because solar people, people that have solar aren't paying, because if, especially how we build it here, mm -hmm. um, if they have enough solar to cover their bill, there's really no reason uh, to worry. Uh, uh, you're, not, you're not paying extra. So, so yeah. what they're saying is basically the people that have solar, they're actually stealing from the poor because the poor is now taking, or the people that don't have solar, which I don't agree with, but, but that's a separate thing. Yeah. Uh, they're taking the brunt of all the rate increases, and it's our fault. So they're doing it, and they're blaming us. We're in a very, we're in a very uh, green-leaning state, but it's still our fault. Yeah. Yeah, that seems quite unfair. Well, four of the five people that were set to vote on this decision were handpicked by Newsom. I see. So it's all just back back alley handshakes and stuff like that. I don't know. But follow the money. What does it tell you? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so I mean, is the fight really over? Are we are we stuck with it now forever? Is there a way to fight back? It it passed. It passed. And so I would say that uh I mean Calus is gonna come up with whatever game plan they come up with, but it passed. I've never seen M one reversed or Nem two reversed, so I don't expect Nem three to be reversed. Well, I've heard stories that in Hawaii they were actually able to reverse a NEM decision because it, it completely ruined the solar market out there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's not it's not lost forever. I mean, we, we can I, still bring it back. I have no idea. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah, you can't predict the future, right? I mean, that's how companies make billions of dollars predicting that. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have any advice for solar customers as, as we're moving into NEM3 now? Yeah. Get on the boat right now or wave at it. <laughs> from, from the shore <laughs> is there like a is there like a deadline before if like if so, they can they get can they still get within the the good yeah the de the the trigger for the net metering um 2.0 to to grandfather and retain it yeah and and by the way you get 20 years of net metering 2.0 where they can't uh ungrandfather you they can't change the rules it's a legally binding document with a utility company and so and they know that and that's why they're trying to go back and uh, undo people's 20 years in net metering, that failed. And yeah, that was not, one of the things that helped us fight it that's, back. That's, uh, that's not going to happen because they, they would, uh, well, I believe that's not going to happen. Yeah. Again, I don't know for sure. But um, net metering 2.0, you, you just, we have to get you in now. We have to submit an application 
for net metering, as long as it's deemed uh, valid without any deficiencies, you're locked in. Whether it takes an extra two, three, four months to install, you're still, there's no construction timeline on it. You're still locked in. You can still do batteries um, without ungrandfathering yourself. Let's say you have an M2 and you had it for a couple years and now you want to do some batteries. You can, it's not going to affect your NAM2 status. And so we got to get the net metering application sent in, deemed without any deficiencies. Um, and uh, you, we, can, we can retain that NAM2 status early. So if they sign a contract with us, is there anything else that has to be done after that? We would take a couple days to uh, submit and have that application correct without any deficiencies. And so for us, I believe we're putting a, a hard stop on it around April 1st, even though the deadline is in fact April 14th, because that way we can make sure all the people that are signing up because of NEM2 or BUS get it, and we don't sign people up that we say, sorry, we messed up or we didn't hit the deadline too. It's, it's, it's a construction industry. Solar is very uh, technical. There needs to be a little bit of a, of a fail-safe window allotted mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. sure that we hit the mark every time. Okay, so you've heard it straight from the horse's mouth. If you want to get in before it's too late and before the huge rush at the beginning of April, you want to get in now. The sooner the better, right? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, so give Ashton a call. We're right here at optiononesolar.com, 855-502-6363. Give us a call and we'll get you hooked up as soon as possible. All right, thank you, Ashton. No problem, you guys. We'll see you guys later.